Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of No One's a Critic. I'm Kino, joined as always by Mac. And uh, I just want to start off this podcast uh, by giving you a shout out uh, because you uh, finally finished the Better Call Saul video, which uh, I watched and very much enjoyed. So congrats on, on that project. It was a big success. Thank you very much. I'm very glad to be done with it. It's, it's, I mean, I'm sure you can relate with projects. It's like, you kind of get a kick out of them and then you get sick of them. And then you're, and then you kind of like, for me, I get to like the editing phase and I'm like, all right, let's go. And then about halfway through the editing phase, I'm like, fuck, I just want to be done with it. And then you finish it and you're like, Oh, I'm glad I went through that. But like, Holy fuck. No, <laughs> it's yeah, definitely, I'm, it's so much work. Yeah. But I'm glad it's done on a true detective season two. Um, what are what are you up to? What's you working on? You're still working on your wire breakdown, I believe, correct? Yeah, so that I finally started releasing that um, since the last time we spoke, um, and uh, it's been cool to to see people's reactions to that. There, I I, I did a, a very different format than I usually do, rather than just episode by episode. I I talked about this before. I'm breaking it down in like different sections, and people were very receptive to that. They're like, "Oh, totally makes sense." You know, it's like you said, the wire is so dense and so there's so much layers to it that you really have to approach it from a much different angle than i usually do so um that's been pretty exciting and like 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 you were talking about before like the editing all that kind of stuff is it takes up a lot of time and um especially lately i've been distracted because uh, i've been playing the new hogwarts legacy game that uh just came out a couple weeks ago nice nice how's the game going it's fun it's uh it's it's a really polished, fun, slightly you know easy game. Um, you know what I, I I compare it to, like like Hogwarts Legacy is to RPGs what Harry Potter the the novels are to fantasy, which is it's it's a very kind of streamlined, cozy, nice read, but with not a whole lot of depth. And that's how I kind of describe the game too. You know, it's not Elden Ring, it's not Morrowind. Um, it's very simple, but for what it is, it's very fun, and they give you a lot of freedom, and it, it just plays very smoothly. So I've been having a lot of fun procrastinating on editing by playing the game. Yeah, that must be hard because I feel like Harry Potter is one of those franchises, and like there are some others. Um, I know Hunger Games is kind of like that, where it's almost like it's almost like caught in this gully between is this like aimed for children or young adults or adults? And, and like with, I know with Harry Potter, the books were sort of, you know, they were released in a way it's like, Oh, you see them growing up. But now that the books are done, it's like, so who is this like, or at least going forward? Like if, you know, with like Potter world and like all that stuff, the franchise stuff, who is like the primary audience? Cause they get like the books get into some pretty heavy shit. I think the books evolved over time. You know, the early books and the early movies were definitely more like the children's fantasy genre. And as it went on, it became YA, which is, again, mm -hmm. the, the Hunger Games, Divergent, all that, the, the teen drama phase of the later books. And that's why I kind of tuned out. I mean, I obviously I read all the books and I watched all the movies. It was a big part of my childhood, but um I I, I don't really like going back and rewatching the new Harry Potter movies like when after three he really feels like a teenager at that point and it feels like a teen drama more so than a magic fantasy adventure like the early books do so um even though i'm a, even I, I am a fan of the genre but i acknowledge that like it's it's not that great it's a it's a little bit of a shallow series the more it goes on especially like in like by book six it's like i remember the uh, well, not the books but the movies um like the whole subplot in that one is um him and Ginny uh finally getting it on and um it's like it's funny because there's like a lot of time spent on like you know the you know the the teenagers the hormones and like they're they're blossoming feelings for each other and i'm like like the whole time i'm like isn't there like wizard hitler isn't he like out trying to kill you right now shouldn't you be a bit like the seventh one kind of is pretty based like it kind of like kicks in the gear and it's pretty good but yeah it's like after yeah the sixth one for me was always the weird one because it was after order of the phoenix where you know, Harry kind of becomes more militant and is like, let's go Voldemort. I'm going to fucking kill you. And then six comes around and it almost has like this weird, I mean, obviously like the ending of six with spoilers, uh, with Dumbledore's death, like that's such a huge moment. And we learn, we learn about the Horcruxes and stuff, but in terms of pacing, it's very strange where it's like, 
It's like, hey, you're going to like finally go and kill Voldemort? And it's like, no, nah, I'm going to go. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to study a bit. And then maybe afterwards I'll get there. <laughs> the, the romance angle of Harry Potter has always been very weird. And I think fans have kind of criticized, uh, you know, the story for that. It's like he has the first romance is with the, you know, the, the Asian Cho Chang girl. And it's like, she's just like not a character at all. She just is like, Oh, I'm sad that my boyfriend, uh, fucking Robert Pattinson died. And Harry's like, I'm going to swoop in and take advantage. (laughs) Yeah. She's like, I like you, but I also kind of don't like you and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, I don't know. It's such a bland, like emotionless romance. And then, so the, the Ginny thing is the same thing. It's like, who the fuck cares about any of this? Like, I just want to see more magic adventure shit. Like, also, Harry, Harry, way to like break the one bro code rule of not nailing your best. Oh, yeah, your friend's sister. sister. Yeah. And he only has one sister. It's like, for fuck's sake, Harry. <laughs> well, you know what's also <laughs> fucked up is that like she looks just like his mom. Like, the, the, yeah. the way she's Mrs. described. Weasley's, Mr. Weasley's got it going on a little bit. Oh, Harry's mom. No, no, Harry's mom. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, yeah, it's yes. like. It looks she looks You're like a young correct. version of his mother. And there's You're a lot you can read into that. Um I don't know. And then there's a the whole Ron and Hermione thing. We know he's got like parent issues or like mommy issues, daddy issues, so And there's the whole Ron Hermione thing. It's like uh these people suck. I mean Hermione's cool, but like Ron sucks, you know, so hard. But that's why like like the the smart girls can't but help but fall for like those goofy lovable types, you know. Uh, I guess. Do you identify as Ron? In ways, definitely. <laughs> everyone, everyone likes to think they're Harry, but then they, yeah. they're just really just Ron. They're bubbling idiots. And <laughs> I mean, Harry's just such a bland character overall that he's just like, it's easy to identify as him. Like He doesn't have yeah. a lot of real discernible traits other than being kind of good, kind of courageous, you know, not a whole lot there. Yeah, if anything, if it's funny now that I'm thinking back to like all the Star Wars discourse that we've been talking about, and um, you know, like everyone talks about Ray being a Mary Sue, and people counter with like, well, Luke was too a little bit, or Gary's too, and I'm like, if we're gonna talk about that, I almost wonder is like Harry Potter a good Gary Stu character? I mean, he does face adversity, but it, a lot of times, it, it's not so much that Harry is a Gary Stu; it's more of the fact that it seems like. He's a very reactive character. Like if it were up to Harry, he would just like go to school and like I don't want I don't want to deal with this shit. But everything kind of ha ha Harry, like I'm I'm returned. He's like fuck I, until like the last couple books. Then he becomes like kind of based. Yeah, I wouldn't say that Harry's a Gary Stu because he's not very good at anything. Like besides <laughs> like flying and stuff. Like he's got no like re like I mean he's got like general skills and stuff, but he doesn't have like you know. Like, oh, I'm really good at this kind of magic or something. He's just kind of, like, generic. Um, yeah. Like, Hermione's great at a bunch of stuff. Um, some of the other characters are good at stuff. But he's just, like, again, like you said, he's just reactive and along for the ride. And he's the chosen one, so that's what makes him special. But um, you're right. He doesn't have, like, a like a, a driving motivational force that kind of pushes him forward, which I always thought was um, kind of a mistake because... So, so the books and the movies, they set up this kind of, or they, they try to set up this kind of parallelism between him and Voldemort, which is like, Harry's scared to like, oh, I can speak to snakes. And I, you know, like, maybe that means that I'm like Voldemort and, and stuff like that. And it kind of, I that never rang true for me because Harry never like lusted for power or anything like that. He wasn't even particularly ambitious or anything. So there was never any kind of danger that he might go down the same path as Voldemort. So them trying to set up this kind of parallelism between the two characters it just really rang flat for me yeah at no point when it's like oh yeah harry's gonna go off the deep end and become one of these fucking no. one of these fucking like white supremacist-esque yeah like these death wizard Nazis, and it's like, yeah and like, i think at worst harry would be like like maybe he'd be like a little racist maybe at worst but like not like he'd be like he's not gonna go to like clan meetings in yeah. like these random graveyards. No, I, I think like what they try were they were trying to do was like, oh, you know, Voldemort, besides the, the wizard racism bullshit or whatever, like the thing that was like so evil about him was that he he lusted for power and he wanted immortality and like he all this stuff. And I feel like they could have made Harry Potter like, ooh, I want to 
learn all the magic I can and get powerful and stuff like that. And that could have been like a character motivation for him that could have maybe been like, Ooh, I might, you know, go to the dark side or something. But the problem is Harry's not really like that. He doesn't like try to get more power or learn more magic. He's just like, Oh, cool. I'm, I was an orphan and I'm going to wizard school and I'm just, again, along for the ride kind of thing. Well, it's funny because um, Sean has a good, the YouTuber Sean, he has a good video on Harry Potter. And um, it's funny because I, I read the books when I was younger, but I don't really recall them because I was really young. So, and but then I watched the movies. I watched the movies a few times. And sometimes what happens is I kind of imprint what happens in the movies onto the books, thinking like, oh, everything kind of happens the same, right? Uh, generally, yes, but there's also a lot of like weird shit in the books about like the politics of the wizarding world. Um, one thing that, Sean pointed out, and it is true now that I think about it, is that, um, you know, as for all of its like maturity as it went on, like, you know, like, you know, heavier themes and whatnot, uh, the novels or the story itself is very like deterministic, I guess you could say, in the sense of like, like just like in terms of like the houses. Like the big joke of Harry Potter is like, what is with Slytherin? Like, it's like, yeah, it's where all like the fucking little shits go. <laughs> like, it's like, isn't that awful for like, kid children that's like hey you're going to slytherin like every single bad person who has ever existed th that's you you're one of them don't fucking talk to us that was something as a kid even as a kid i realized was a big mistake of her writing which is the fact that she never fleshed out the other houses i mean yes we get the stuff of like you know the, the ravenclaws are smart and the Hufflepuffs are loyal and stuff, but Ravenclaws are smart and Hufflepuffs are pussies. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I mean, Robert Pattinson's a, a Hufflepuff. So that, that they have that in their corner. Oh, was but... he? Oh, he was. Yeah, he was. But that again, they're, they're, they're so generic that she had to like kind of post post story kind of like write up like, Oh no, 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 the Hufflepuffs are great. But any, regard, setting that aside, like she never really fleshed out or gave us characters from the other houses, like maybe one or two here and there. But we never like we should have had point of view characters in other houses to kind of flesh out like, hey, here's what the culture over here is like. And that would have really added a lot of depth to the world. And I think fans really wanted that because if you look at Hogwarts Legacy, like the statistics online, Slytherin is the number one house choice because you get to, you get to pick which house you want to go into. <laughs> and like people want to go into Slytherin. And I, I, I chose Slytherin for my character, too. So. Are there like different like stats well. and shit? Oh uh, well, I, I like, don't know where the stats come from. Maybe from Steam or something. But like they were able to say like, oh yeah, oh, no. the majority of people chose Slytherin as their house. I mean, in the game, depending on the house you choose, does it like affect? Like, is it like in like classes in Dark Souls or something? Uh, not not per no, not particularly. Like okay. you get you get the different common rooms. Like you know, the, they all have their different rooms, and you get mm. some. You get some slightly different character relationships because, like, some of the characters, depending on if you're in their house or not, they'll have a little bit of different dialogue. But it it really doesn't matter. Like, you you get the full story no matter what house you're in. It's to, to about the whole deterministic stuff. It's funny though because what's interesting is that I think it well, it's kind of like both ways. Where on one hand you have like you have a character like Malfoy, who I I think he kind of got shortchanged in at least the movies. I thought he was like the more interesting character because here's a character who is surrounded by all these like awful influencers who are trying to push him one way, but he he's clearly having like, you know, regrets about it. And I, I think he kind of got pushed to the side come the end of the series. But then on the other hand is you have Voldemort where even in the, I mean, again, I'm going based off the movies, so there might be some more backstory. I don't know. But even in the movies, like it's like it's like established like since he was a child this kid's fucking evil. like when dumbledore first met him he's like no this kid's fucking evil and we gotta like do something about this and like it it's it's almost like i don't know like on one hand i'm like i do kind of like fuck with the idea of just like you know some villains are just evil to be evil but on the other hand it's like it's like there's nothing there like no even sort of like half-baked sort of backstory just he's evil I think J.K. Rowling really, like, wrote her characters very simply. Like, again, even the point of view characters like Harry and Dumbledore. and Like, I mean, Dumbledore's not a point of view character. But, like, the characters you're meant to, like, really kind of identify with and understand. She writes them very simply. And you, and you could say maybe she's not a great writer overall. 
um or she's just trying to keep it simple for the kids or something like that but like again like i think we're supposed to have sympathy for draco which is the problem is he's written as such this little shithead with no redeeming qualities until the very end yeah. that it's it's really hard to be like oh yeah he's misunderstood or something because again he just comes off like a little shit because you know she wrote him as a simple you know character like that in the second book, bro, you drop the wizarding equivalent of the N-word against Hermione. And then all of a sudden, we're supposed to be like, oh, actually, yeah, maybe he's not all bad. And it's like, I don't know, man. You've been kind of fucking with these kids for the last, like, six years. Like, I'm sorry that your parents are, like, wizard Nazis, but, like, you know, shit, man. Well, well you know what been cool? Maybe if they made him, like, a point of view character, we could have seen, like, some of his, you know, what was going on at home. And maybe he's not as comfortable with this stuff as, you know, his parents are, blah, blah, blah. In Every fact, I, I, I want to bring up something because you, in addition to doing True Detective, you're also going to do Avatar The Last Airbender, right? Yeah, so I, I put a poll out there saying, because um, I saw some stupid tweet. It was like, um, oh, this person tweeted, um, they didn't like Legend of Korra because it's it only takes place 100 years after Avatar The Last Airbender. And, there, and there's like, between the series, there's like a big jump in technology. Um, and this person was like, this is unrealistic. And then someone pointed out that the invention of the airplane by the Wright brothers and the um, the moon landing were like, I think like 60 years apart, which that kind of blew my mind too. I was like, oh shit. Because like once you, once the technology kind of hits that peak, it just, but, um, and so I posted, I was like, hey, is Legend of Korra, like, is, is there like culture war? shit with that because i've heard like i don't think most people feel that way but i think it does like veer into like mary sue territory like wokeism whatever and but during that i was like oh you know what i've never actually seen avatar the last airbender so i was like oh, i'll throw it up there and i didn't actually think it was gonna win and then it won by like 20 percent. and with everyone saying like yeah man this was like instrumental to my childhood and i was like and he i'm someone who has never seen an episode you, so, you need to watch it brother it is it might be the greatest cartoon of all time well now it's i hope i'm not gonna like because a lot of people mention in the comments like this is like instrumental to my childhood and i'm like i'm a little afraid because i'm kind of going in with it with yeah no i know that's the problem with when, when, when you yeah. hype it up too much your expectations just just watch it go go into it like you know fresh i'm not going to spoil anything but i just wanted to say that like that series handles the kind of like the character stuff we're talking about here in a much better way than Harry Potter does. Um, but I, I, when you watch it, I really think you're going to like appreciate it because it's just an incredibly well, well, well written character fantasy adventure story. Um, I'll leave it there, but I'm really excited because I, I love that show too. It's awesome. And it's only got like 60 episodes, 20 minutes an episode. Let's go. Oh yeah. You'll knock it out quick. Man. Uh, <laughs> it's You'll, you'll want to keep watching too. It's pretty fun. Yeah, um perfect. but anyway we're, we're veering off topic go back to harry potter um yeah like i said the, i mean the books like i said don't have a whole lot of depth that's why i kind of describe them as a little bit shallow but we do have to admit that like jk rowling made this just incredibly cozy world like it's not the greatest in terms of like fantasy world builder or anything like that like she she'll invent something in one book and like have it not be relevant at all in later books and it's like why don't we use the time turners to go, you know, assassinate Voldemort in the past or some, you know, shit like that. But um, the world is is just fun, right? It's like it's it, it feels fun to imagine yourself at Hogwarts. It feels fun to imagine yourself in this world. And it's why the Hogwarts Legacy game, I think, is so popular is because we throw out the bullshit, you know, story stuff from the Harry Potter story and we just get the fun world and you get to run around and have fun in it. So um yeah definitely some great you know world building there i think that's actually why i'm kind of glad i watched the movies and not read the books because so uh, back to sean's essays in the movie i think they actually cut out a lot of like the more questionable shit that she tries to delve into one of them being so i never realized this because again i don't really remember the books but apparently the the, the whole um elf slavery thing it's so I yeah I just thought it was like a one off thing with to kind of like show Dobby and to show that the uh the Malfoys were evil and have a cute little arc. I didn't realize like the books apparently like 
they try to he, she tries to go into the politics of it and it gets really weird where it's like something around like along the lines of like yeah, actually elves kind of dig it and it's like mm, <laughs> okay let's slow down a bit i'm glad you brought that up because yeah like some of, some of her storylines are kind of cringy like there's there's a whole thing about hermione trying to trying to be like the black lives matter activist of the <laughs> of the uh of the elves and stuff and she writes it in a way that hermione's like cringe for doing this she's like no one cares about elf slavery like you're just being a dork why are you doing this kind of thing uh we're meant to be like embarrassed like by proc like harry and ron are like embarrassed to be around her when she's like you know elf lives matter kind of shit like that um i i will say though i i think people read too much into some of what jk rowling wrote they're like, oh, you know, she's pro-slavery because of the elf stuff, like I just described. I think she's just not that great of a writer, and she just kind of I throws agree. some of this stuff in there. And it's like people are reading, like, oh, she's trying to, like, you know, say something when it's really just kind of accidental. Yeah, it's, I think I kind of agree. I don't think she's based on, like, everything else in, like, a, like you mentioned, the time turners. I think it's more of just, like, she tries to, like, it's like, oh, I'm going to dabble in, like, in like mature themes and it's like how about you don't like <laughs> unless like you're like and also this is what pisses me off about the movies is that there's that whole plot line with dobby being a slave of the malfoys and like the entire point is like yeah they're terrible people look at the slave but then in the fifth movie sirius who was supposed to be like this like heavenly god like he's the godfather like he's harry's whole world he has a slave it's like wait a minute you can't do that. You can't fucking and his and like his slave is and I, I think the justification is like, oh, but his slave is named Creature. He's he's grumpy. Like, well, he's a slave. Like, <laughs> he's the equivalent of Samuel L. Jackson's character in Django. He's the slave who's like fully on board with like the racism stuff and is like, yes, go pure bloods. Fuck you know everyone else. Like, I'm happy to be slaves to these people. And, like, Sirius, like, resented him by proxy of his family and stuff like that. But, again, I, I don't think J.K. Rowling has the, the skills as a writer to pull this kind of storyline off where it's, like, yes, yeah, Sirius is, like, has some, like, bad stuff in him, even though he hates his racist family and stuff like that. Like, she does the same thing with Harry Potter's father because Harry's dad was, like, a bully. Yeah, they never explore that. no. They go into it a little bit more in the books, but like he was a fucking Chad asshole that kind of made uh, Snape become a racist incel because he stole uh, his waifu. Um, but again, I don't think she's got the skill to pull off that kind of characterization without being without it being stupid. It's really a, it's a really a shame because one of the because that's such a, a big issue in not an issue but such a big part of harry's character is that he kind of has like these visions of his parents as like these angelic or even or even rather he views the world in very binary colors snape is evil and my parents they're so good and then the yeah in the fifth movie there's that flashback where it shows for a brief moment james like bullying snape and you're like and then of course that's around the time you start to realize that snape is actually um I actually don't think his true allegiance is. It's actually interesting. I'm trying to think back. His true allegiance isn't actually like um, revealed until the final movie, but by like the fifth movie, you kind of get a feeling of like uh, you can't really tell which side he's on, but you're definitely sure he's not like full Voldemort because he seems to be helping Harry, even though he hates the fucking kid. But they never explore like, hey Harry, how does it feel that like your dad was probably was not like this like really great good being that you thought he was they never they do it a little bit more in the books like he has some conversations with with some of the, his dad's friends and Damn. he's like why did he do this but even even still it's like they drop it very quickly they're like oh yeah he was just a kid you know it wasn't that great but you know snape was still an incel weirdo so fuck him so oh, i should have kept that shit in i know well i mean it's true it's what he is <laughs> like yeah. memes aside it's like that's that's how he got like turned to the dark side and became a death eater you know but no i agree with you i think that that is a case of now granted i think that like there is something to be said about like i think her based on like what i've heard of the books and even in the movie 
she is someone who I think is one of those. She's like, she's kind of like almost like a classical liberal type or like almost like boomer tier where it's like, you know, the status quo is don't like the way to go. Like it's whatever, like right now is good, even if there are some bad things. Um, and like, like people like Hermione, like the radical change types are always like nut job crazies. Um, but no, I, I agree where it's like, I think the most of it, I don't think she's that skilled. I don't think she's that like astute to like, actually, I'm going to put in like really, really un- undercoated themes. I, I just think that she's in way over her head and she wants to like dabble in like really like mature themes. And it's like, no, just stop. Which is why she ends up dropping a lot of it as it goes on. It's like, oh, this isn't working. And then she just kind of drops it and like, let's not talk about it anymore. Have we reached that part of the podcast, Mac, where we finally had to talk about you know jk rowling and JK the situation <laughs> probably unfortunately yeah we've reached we reached that part so it's been a crazy few weeks um, i don't know if you paid attention to the discord but there has been a lot of controversy surrounding the hogwarts legacy game um and backlash against people who play it and stream it um i've been streaming it on my channel too uh, kind of as a fuck you to the protesters but Um, Yeah, there's a lot of people who really wanted to see this game fail because they hate J.K. Rowling for her uh, supposedly anti-transgender beliefs. Um, Do you want to do you want to start off with that? Um, Because I I have some thoughts, but I think you might be a little bit more knowledgeable than me on these things. Well, it's hard because like J.K. herself, I think she's gone to deep and I think she's just like she it was one of those things it, she kind of reminded me of like jordan peterson where when you first start off it's like oh maybe she just has some boomer tier beliefs maybe she's just like because i i think in general not to defend like these beliefs but in general i think when most people spout sort of like transphobic or anti-trans comments they aren't really doing so out of like hate they're more doing so out of a comp- like just complete ignorance and not ignorance in the sense of or uh, I, I shouldn't say ignorance because I think I, I use ignorance when it's like someone knows something to be true, but they ignore it purposely. I I like to use the term uneducated, which I I do think is it does have a slight negative connotation like, oh, so you're stupid. But in all honesty, I think like especially talking with like my family, like back at home and other people, once I kind of get out of like my online bubble, I realize that people just it's just something that people don't really deal with because like trans people are like what less than 1% of the population. It's just something that the vast majority of people don't actually directly deal with. And so their, their views on it are coded by like little snippets they hear in the media or comments they've heard from friends that were, that were already sort of poisoned by like, like you know, Fox news or something or something of the like. Um, and with JK, I was like, when it first, when she first started saying shit, I was like, Oh, okay, maybe, maybe it's just like a boomer thing. Maybe she just is like she thinks she's doing good, but she doesn't know what she's talking about. But now it's been like five years, and she keeps talking about stuff, and it's like okay. But but then there's it. But then there's the extension of okay, and I I kind of made a video on this on death of the author. It it's so hard because when it's someone when it's an artist who's died, you know it's it's one thing you know like if like oh alfred hitchcock was you know misogynist it's like okay but like we can i can still say the psycho is a a very well-made film i it's not going to like up his profile but now we're talking about okay how do we do with artists who are still alive and working as we speak um with jk rowling the the weird thing with the game is that okay well now it's like it is a new game it is a new property but so so where is the line then? It's like is if a new Harry Potter if new Harry Potter merch comes out like even if it's based on the old books can you buy that? What about Potter World? Can you go to there? Is it and I understand the game was more of like it was more about a statement. Um but especially because a lot of people weren't really aware of or even knowledgeable on JK Rowling's stances on trans issues. It's it, it came off to them a lot like, like what 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 are you talking about? It's just a video game, and she, one, a video game she probably 
it, it, unless it, unless I don't know, I don't think so. She had no involvement in the development of. Besides the licensing, now. Yeah, of course. So, okay, so I I, I want to just say up front that I don't give a shit about J.K. Rowling. Like I don't, I'm not out to defend her. I already said I don't think she's a great writer. I think she created cool books, a series, but I don't think she's. I don't enjoy her writing or anything like that. And I don't. I don't care what happens to her financially or if they make a new Harry Potter movie or book or any of that shit. So I don't care. I will say that, like, I am not super knowledgeable about everything she said. I don't follow her on Twitter. I've not read all of her tweets. A cursory Google search of, like, why are people mad at J.K. Rowling has not shown me stuff that's that I would say is, like, overtly hateful to trans people i've looked up articles where like here's everything jk rowling said and i look at that stuff and i'm like okay it seems like yeah maybe she you know is not fully on board with this but it doesn't sound to me like she's espousing hate um well and again you might be more knowledgeable about this than i am because i don't follow her i've not read every single tweet um, but just looking at stuff like the open letters she wrote on her website, which I have open right here, she has paragraphs saying, like, I, I believe the majority of trans identified people not only pose zero threat to others, but are vulnerable for all the reasons I've outlined. Trans people need and deserve protection. Like women, they're most likely to be killed by their sexual part. A bunch of, I mean, there's a bunch of stuff like this. So it doesn't sound to me like a tr like someone who hates trans people. Although there might be stuff that I just have not read. I fully acknowledge that. Oh, no, I, I agree. Nothing that she actually says will sound like it. But the so this is actually funny enough why I compared her to Jordan Peterson in many ways, because like she's not someone who will come out like like a Matt Walsh or a Ben Shapiro type and say, you know, like some like really heinous shit. Um, but what she'll do and she's done this, she did this kind of even from the beginning. She'll say thing. A, a great example was she said something along the lines of, she kind of wrote a tweet like that and it was something along the lines of like, yeah, I totally care about trans people. I care about your safety. Um, I would march with you against discrimination. Dot, dot, dot. Like she didn't actually put that, but like to emphasize it, if you were discriminated on the basis of being trans. So it, it's, it's more, it's not really stuff where it's like, and I actually think that's why it's so much more insidious where it's not, or uh, another is she really pushes the um, the bathroom stuff, like the whole bathroom panic. That was like a huge issue with her. And she was, and she came across, it's like, oh, well, I'm doing it out of concern for women and women's safety. But, but the issue was, is that there was like the actual threat or danger was completely unfounded. It was all sort of like a, just a, a hysterical panic among like right wingers. And so that's, that's what's so hard with her because you can easily point to a person like Matt Walsh and be like, yeah, this person clearly like has a chip on his shoulder about like, you know, trans people or what have you. Um, but with someone like this, where it's very, I'm trying to think of like a good way, like almost like passive bigotry where it's like, it, it's, it's almost, it's, it's always like coded in the, in the, in the, in, in concern. Oh no, I'm just concerned. Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. Now, again, at at the beginning, that's why when people sort of like jumped down our throat at the very beginning, I was like, "Hang on," like because because what often happens is like you'll have people say something like that out of genuine concern because they aren't aware of you know trans issues or statistics or anything like that, and then if someone just jumps down their throat immediately, that person naturally might get defensive and be like, "Well, fuck you, I'm gonna double down." So at the beginning, it's always good to be like, oh, okay, well, why do you think that? And try to actually have a dialogue, which Twitter is not good for. <laughs> I think we can all agree. Um, but with her, it's been like, it's going on like five years now. And she's like still tweets stuff and still makes an issue of it. Uh, making jokes about people with, oh, I think th th that was another one. It was, um, I think some journal was talking about, they use the term like people who menstruate or something like that and she like lost it and like was like what the fuck is this or like along those lines but yeah yeah i again i i don't care about jay Rowling at all i don't care what happens to her financially um i wonder how much of that is people reading in 
to stuff, you know, and the same thing with this game too, right? There were people who were mad because straight up there's a there's a trans character in this game, right? And the game goes like out of its way to be like supportive to trans people. You can you can be trans in the game, like not even just playing as a female character or a male character or whatever. You can make your character female and ha- and you're and you're referred to as a he or a she. You get to pick your your pronouns basically. Mm-hmm. Um, so the game goes out of its way to be supportive of trans people, but there are people who are mad because there's a trans character in the game, and her name is uh, Serona, which apparently is like a Celtic goddess or something. And people mm-hmm. were like, "It's it's a secret joke against trans people because it has the word Sir in her name, like S I R." So they're like, oh, you're, 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 this is transphobic that you name the character that. And it's like, no, motherfucker, this company did not put a secret joke like that in the game, you know, to, to appease JK. They're, they're terrified already of the backlash they were going to get for you just being associated with Harry Potter, you know? So you're, you're definitely reading into this where there is nothing there. (laughs) The poor... The poor like person who like thought of that name just off the cuff, and then they hear the backlash. They're like, "Oh shit!" <laughs> now again, I don't, I don't think he she had any sim- like that's what I mean. It's like I don't think she had any pull. And then it's like it's like, well, she didn't name a like that doesn't really make. Obviously, they wouldn't have that doesn't, like they wouldn't have asked J.K. Rowling, "Hey, can you name the trans character?" Like even if she was involved, they would have been like, "Hey, why don't you, Joanne? Why don't you go over there? We're gonna." We're gonna handle this one. We don't want you getting involved. Yeah, they in this would. Part. They would never do this. And again, I'll choose to believe people who tell me that who are more who are knowledgeable about what J.K. Rowling is all about. I'm just saying that, like, especially what I've seen from the reaction to the game, especially, is people just looking for any kind of excuse to shit on, again, the game, the franchise, all of this stuff, trying to boycott it, harassing people who stream it. Um, which has ironically made the game way more successful, I think, than it would have been without this. Like, people people have bought this game specifically because of the controversy surrounding it, um, which I think is equally stupid. Those people are weird. I, I like it. Go, like that's like the the rank list of like the people who like throw hissy fits, and then the people who it's like or like like you know jump off a bridge to own the libs or something like that. Like that shit drives me nuts. Yeah, I think if you buy the game because you're trying to piss people off, that's stupid too. Like you shouldn't like buy a game out of some social pressure. Just like you should not play it because of some social pressure either. Like if you want to play it, play it. If you don't, don't. Um, but all this controversy surrounding the game and the franchise just seems really dumb to me. Well, it, it goes back to the question of it's like, like this, despite like so like we if we we agree like hey Jake Rowling like like fuck that bitch she's like got a lot of stuff to work on but then the question is like okay well so again what so where is the line when it comes to this sort of death of the author stuff is it i mean like the books are already out so you can read those well hang on what about can you give the books to your kids like it's like hey i love these books when i was a kid here because i have i have all seven books at home and i think i told my mom it's like yeah maybe one of the little cousins wants them um or something like that, or it's like, but yeah. Then what about Potter, Potter World? Or what about what about engaging in Harry Potter fan fiction? It kind of gets to this point where it's like, like I like personally, I didn't buy the game, and I'm and I'm okay with people like doing it. It's like, yeah, it, it just doesn't like with everything with J.K. It just kind of puts a bad taste in my mouth. But then it comes to sort of because if you're gonna draw that line of like don't buy the game or get mad at people for it, it's like or for buying the game or playing the game. Like again, if someone actually says I'm gonna buy the game to like piss off the libs, it's like okay, that that makes you a little weird. But then it's like, well, what what if there's just a person who like isn't actually aware of all this and just likes Harry Potter and just like is excited for the game? It's like, I I don't think I think maybe a better way is to just be like, if they if they're like, yeah, I don't know what everyone's getting upset about. It's like, well, here, like, check out this article and like give it a read, and maybe you can understand their perspective better. But when you just kind of do this thing where you just immediately assume the person is like like attacking you or like jumping on your throat. And I understand it is annoying because there are plenty of people who like someone like JK Rowling herself, who kind of, they almost sort of like put on a, what sort of like a veneer of like, you know, innocence or like, you know, naivete. 
and you end up trying to you end up trying to like have a dialogue with people who's who they've already made up their minds and it can be very frustrating but i think like i think that you still have to do it no matter you always should you should always give the benefit of the doubt because otherwise because the the opposite of just always jumping down people's throat is always probably gonna it's it's always going to end up not in your favor at least from my experience again i just i don't see anything about this game promoting hate or anything like that there's also some other bullshit that they're like oh it's anti-semitic because you know the goblins from like this when at the bank that that the harry keeps his money in that you know the, the, they all keep their money at the bank right and there's mm-hmm. goblins that work there and people are like oh, oh the goblins are like a, a reference to jews and so the game is anti because one of the villains of the game is a goblin um, and he's fighting against wizards because he hates wizards and stuff. And it's like you're trying to stop him, basically. And it's like, again, people are reading like this anti-Semitic shit into it. And again, it's like I, I don't see any of that. I think it's just like a kind of a stupid fantasy game. Um, and I don't see the game promoting any kind of like negativity towards any of these groups. Well, I can definitely I mean, I can agree that like when it comes to like how JK wrote them. Again, I don't think she was doing it to be like anti-Semitic, like he he he. I'm gonna get those Jews. I definitely like, especially like based on other stuff in her book. I think it's just more of an issue of like boomer tier like stuff, where it's just like, oh, these are like common. Tro-. It's it's almost like it's sort of the same way of like. <laughs> I'm trying to think of like a good way to like put it, but like um, I'm I'm thinking of like think of like a movie. Where like you know you know like a white teacher comes in to teach a bunch of like black kids or something, and the teacher comes in and he's like, "Yo, what's up, dogs?" And like all the black kids are like, "What the fuck?" It's almost like that where it's like the person isn't trying to be, the person means well or like they're not like trying to be insultive, but like they don't kind of realize that like, hey, you're kind of dabbling in some like, you know, or like, did you ever see that tweet of that woman who was like? Hey, black. We need to get black people vaccinated. We should start putting COVID stations in KFCs. And everyone was like, "What?" I was like a Dave I, Chappelle bit. I, I thought it was a joke. I was like, "There's no way." But I, I think it was just some like white Karen who just, uh, "You mean well, honey?" But, um, but so like, I can understand like that critique. But if you're critiquing the game, it's like, well, the the game is based off of the like the the likity of the books and movies so it's like the, it's not like they can change the the look of it's like actually the goblins don't run the bank anymore it's like well hang on well you can't really do that like you can't retcon that hard i mean i guess you could but it'd be yeah, like what the fuck kind, they kind of do to be honest like they yeah, they try like like no no but like the game goes really out of its way to try to be uh sent like not insensitive to groups like every and like every slytherin you meet is like basically apologizing for the the racist way their house is kind of connotated in the books like you meet a character who's like oh yeah my family are racist and i hate them like which doesn't really make any sense because doesn't it take place like a hundred years before the books oh no definitely and that's that it takes place in the 1800s and that's some people are criticizing it because it's like do you really think there's all these openly gay people in the 1800s um the, the the game like goes out of its way to be every character you meet's basically like oh yeah my husband who I'm in a gay marriage with is over there go get a quest from him like the game goes out of its way to be like we support you know LGBTQ you know groups because again they're trying to avoid the controversy so the fact that again this game is so targeted really doesn't make sense to me um, yeah. it's a it's a series that goes like it's very much towards the left like I'll say this Harry Potter is definitely towards the left in its uh, views. It also it also kind of is questionable because it's like, well, if all like these Slytherin kids are so woke in like the late eighteen hundreds, then why how did why Slytherin why are they still all like semi Nazis come <laughs> like the late nineties? I think they were scared again to portray any kind of of you know racism or homophobia or anything like this in the game. Um, just because they, they want to avoid controversy, and again, it's it's a fun game, and it's it, it's good for what it is. But um, yeah, I, I definitely think people are overblowing the impact this game will have on anything. Right? It, it, people are going to play it for a while, have fun, and then they'll move on to a new game. You know, that's how it goes. 
it's interesting because now that we to, to sort of that point it's interesting because i mean that's always been sort of a a difficulty when it comes to representing any sort of marginalized group whether it's people of color gay people trans what have you women it's that so let's say i'm making a movie in the 1970s now it's like okay well i'd, I'd like to get more perspectives than just like you know like a white guy main character or something of course however i also understand that as a creator you don't want to just have like i i, I like if i'm making the movie in the 1970s i don't want to have every black character like have the white people be racist to them and just be like fuck because i don't want their the entire purpose of that character to just be like you're here to show that the time period was racist and be like hurled insults at because like that because I, I that happens a lot where it's just like this black character just exists to be like a toke like a a pawn to be like have abuse or maybe even be murdered um or beat up or something or and this is actually why the last of us um the episode three i know you haven't watched it but it focuses on a gay couple and it was it, it's oh i watched i watched the last of us i'm watching it oh. so we can discuss it on the podcast oh, okay cool so so the episode with bill and frank a lot of people pointed out that like it was very refreshing to see like a gay love story that wasn't mired in like it, it didn't end with one of them getting killed because they were gay and it's like because yeah that's usually the narrative but on the other hand it's like if i'm making a movie in the 1970s or even in the, or like the 1950s and I don't have the characters behave in ways like if I don't have the white characters behave in ways towards the black characters that they probably would have realistically given the time period. Am I in a sense sort of whitewashing the it's like, Oh yeah, no people were cool. Blacks in like the 1950s. It was just the bad people who weren't. And it's like, I don't really think that's how it was. I think it was a lot more complicated than that. Again, I don't I don't think every story needs to address every single issue, right? Are you going to portray if you're going to tell a story in 1970s, you're going to address, you know, every single social issue that's going on? No, you're going to address it if it's related to the story you're telling, you know. There's plenty of stories that don't involve any of that stuff. It's not it's not relevant to the plot. I mean, if you want to tell a story like that, and there are plenty of great, you know, movies that do. Um, but I think that's one of the problems people have with a lot of media today because it feels the need to put this stuff in there that it's like, yeah, we had to address racism in a story about magical, you know, fucking elves, you know, wandering around. It's like, this isn't really relevant and it's kind of, you know, stupid. And and the shame is, is that like, you can do it, but it, it it's like, just, they, they always do it in like the most like, almost, again, it's like very... I, I distinguish between like liberal and lefty liberal is very much like the sort of mentality of like, you know, like that white teacher. It's like, yo, what's up? What's up dog. And then the white teacher wins over the black kids and, and strives them to succeed. And like in their mind, it's like, Oh, isn't this a nice story? And then like, you actually ask like black people, they're like, like, yeah, but like it kind of has a weird connotation. Right. And they kind of don't see that. And it, so it's all, whenever they try to do like, you know, like message movies or like stuff like that, it always comes off as like really just. Uh... I, I know we bring this up all the fucking time, but I think like the wire, you know, is such a great example of how you handle that, which is the wire touches on all this kind of stuff, but it's not like obvious about like, like the characters do not talk about like systemic oppression or any of this stuff because, and again, I'm not from there, so I don't fucking know, but dollars to donuts, I bet you, that if you go to a ghetto in Baltimore, at least when the, when the wire was coming out, people were not talking about like systemic racism and blah, blah, blah. They were just going about their lives and you see it, right? You see stuff that happens and you're like, oh yeah, that's bad. But the characters, I don't know. You don't need to make straw men and you don't need to make like these token characters that have to just spit out the message at the audience. You know, they can, people can just understand. They're smarter the audience is smarter than a lot of these writers give them credit for. Well, the, well, it's, it, and that's a case where it's like, so, so the wire did address systemic racism, but it did it in a way where it was more show don't tell. It showed that like, Hey, like it, like season four is a perfect example. Hey, these kids, like it's not, these kids are dumb. These kids aren't stupid. These kids aren't lost causes. They're good kids. They're smart kids. They have potential. 
but the system that the, in which they in which they existed doesn't believe they can they're just trying to get them out the door and and that is why they end up where they do it doesn't have there doesn't have to be a scene where like Prez Belusky comes up it's like you know everyone says why well, it's like it, he doesn't have to give like a big speech like it the show almost like trusts you that like you can pick up what it's putting or even in the first season where it's like I actually I always I always love to mention how um there was that Harvard professor who wrote an essay calling the wire racist because it portrayed black people as drug dealers in season one. And it's like, I don't know what, to th- I don't know what. Did you do miss all here. the cops that were also <laughs> black that were not even going that, against them? Not even that, but like there were, there were obviously like, like, e- like evil black characters like Stringer Bell or, you know, D'Angelo or not D'Angelo, sorry, uh, Avon. But then you also had Bodie and then you had Wallace and then on the other side, you had Daniels and Kima, but then also you had Burel. So this idea that like, I'm like, bro, what do you like? This is like one of the most perfect representations of like, like, I don't know what, if this doesn't, if this isn't enough for you, I don't know what is. One of the things that was, I, again, I, I know we've got off on a wire tangent, but that's how it kind of goes on this podcast. <laughs> we just love to goes. fucking talk about the wire. What I think was, was so great about this show was that it, it could show again both sides of it good and bad characters no matter your race or your gender or any of this kind of stuff like that there's there's a character of officer walker um he's the black like patrolman who breaks that kid's finger in season four and so like, he's a piece of shit like oh yeah i remember that character yeah and 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 the book that i read the corner which is uh not non-fiction it's, it's about real life it talked about how there's a lot of black officers and specifically black ones in Baltimore at this time who were unusually like brutal and cruel because they knew that they could not get in trouble for police brutality because the fact that they were black. And so again, it it shows both sides of racism, right? There's the whole thing about like Rawls can't uh, become police commissioner because he's white, right? Carchetti cannot appoint a white person to be permanent uh, commissioner. So we see again, both sides of that argument. It doesn't ignore the racial angle, but it doesn't like obsess over it or it weaves it naturally into the story. Well, it it, it shows white. both sides of it. It's not just that the system is bad because evil white people are in charge of it. Right. We see evil black people. We see, you know, all this kind of stuff and affecting it. And the issues go much deeper than racism. It's a part of it, but there's deeper systemic things about why things are the way they are. Yeah. Well, funny enough, that's like to kind of go back. That's almost like liberal that's almost like a liberal like um viewpoint of like black people can't be racist they're black and it's like you, uh, no stop shut up shut up <laughs> don't open your uh, read up on this stuff and then come back but oh my god very like surface level level one sort of views as a minority i can confirm we are all very racist in fact I, i've actually from in a lot of they actually say in a lot of like when it comes to like, you know, white on black racism, it's very, I mean, obviously there are like just straight up like clan members, but also a lot of it to kind of go back to the whole, like, you know, JK thing. It's very passive. It's not like in in a lot of cases, white people can like be trying to do good like that woman with the KSC, but it's just because all of these stereotypes are built into the, and like baked into the culture that it just kind of, even when you're trying to do good, it, it can have negative effects. But within but then there are like uh, colorism is a good example of within the actual communities, the bigotry and the racism can be like kind of you point out, it can almost be more explicit because people think it's like, oh, I can say it's about other black people because I'm black. And it's like that doesn't make what you're saying <laughs> any less stereotypical or bigoted. Bill Burr has a funny bit about that where he's like he was complaining about how racism in movies is always like white people yelling at black people and in reality it's like you know every, all, all racist conversations begin with this i'm not racist but <laughs> <laughs> and it's a very funny bit about that or it was um that family guy joke where he appears like his like it was like a white man's dialogue in a spike lee movie and it's just the white guy behind the counter going rah, 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 or something like that yeah um so that's you know We've reached kind of towards the end of the podcast. Any final thoughts about Harry Potter or JK Rowling shit we should talk about? I hope she stops tweeting. It's getting, it's giving me a headache. (laughs) 
that's I mean, that's good advice for anyone, really, is like you should probably <laughs> stop tweeting. You know, Twitter is like this machine that enables your worst, least thought out thoughts to be made permanent on the Internet forever. Um, which is why I never tweet anything besides like announcements of like, hey, a new video came out, blah, blah, blah. Because I know that like if I if I post something, I'm probably going to regret it later. Not because it's like racist or homophobic or whatever, but just because most thoughts you have are, are probably pretty cringe. They're probably stupid because most people are, are pretty stupid. Or it's it's more like an issue of like. It, it's kind of it kind of goes back to um, or uh, funny enough, I'm, I'm writing the true detective analysis right now. And one of what one, something I think about, I, I look up any major, or just Google like first draft quotes, and you'll find like a hundred, like famous authors who were like, yeah, the first draft of anything is shit. Like your first, like every, like in some form or the other, is like your first draft is gonna fucking suck. And that's the thing. I think for most people, we all have like these intrusive thoughts, like our knee jerk reactions. But given any situation, but if you just take a moment and kind of sit back and just be like, okay, hang on, let's read into this. Let's sit with this for a bit. Let's let me actually think of an opinion. Like if someone it, like, think of it, if I was like on a national interview, how would I answer this question? I would have a much more nuanced view, but now stuff with like Twitter and shit, you're just like, oh, well, <laughs> this is what I think. And it's like, maybe you should have like waited like five minutes before, <laughs> or <laughs> I almost, I almost wonder if like a feature would be good of like you tweet something and then there's like, we're going to, we're going to upset a 10 minute timer. And if you want to delete this tweet or change it at all, you can come back and edit it before we send it out. I almost feel like that would be a great idea. <laughs> I mean, that would literally be so great for people. It'd be bad for Twitter because Twitter makes its whole thing off of stupid shit that generates controversy and then people respond to it. Exactly. And again, Twitter is this awful place for discourse. It's just, it's like a sea of the worst takes ever. Um, the whole on the whole, you know, Hogwarts thing. I was, I obviously, the people who were protesting the game are so fucking stupid, but the people who were defending it were also like giving some really, really awful takes of like, well, if you if you don't support this game, you better not, you know, support iPhones or cars because those are all like, you know, bad for you know people or the environment or whatever. And it's like. I'm so sick of this fucking argument that's like, oh, because, you know, technology is made is, is, you know, made in inhumane ways in some countries. That means you cannot engage with it. It's like, you know, we ha we ha we live in a society where I fucking have to have a phone. I have to I have to engage with the Internet. I have to engage with this stuff. Um, so I, yeah, I, I just the, saw um, so many bad takes during this. There's discussion. that meme. There's that meme where it's like we should improve anxiety. We should improve society. I they posted and, that. They yeah, posted that like, in oh, response you, to yeah. That's like the mean because like it's such a it's such a brain dead take where it's like, hey, maybe we should try to improve the healthcare system. It's like, well, you buy iPhones. It's yeah, like, what? So, yeah. <laughs> like, what are you talking about? Or it's like, yeah, I don't know. It's it's been and fun. People, it's been fun to but, watch all this shit, but it's also been mind numbing to see the absolute stupidity on both sides of the argument. Well, that's why those sort of people, it's like, that's why at the very least, like, at the very least, like, the hyper, like, vigilant kind, like, at least, like, even when they say, like, really stupid shit and, like, shit that goes overboard, on one hand, at the same time, I'm like, well, at least, like, I don't know, at least, like, you're fighting for something, at least, like, you're believing in something, even if it's, like, off base, at least, like, you're kind of, like, you have some sort of conviction. The people you're just talking about, the people who post that meme of, like, oh, curious. What kind of makes me sad about those types is like they, they, they like that they strike me as people who are like. Do you actually believe in anything? Do you actually want anything to improve? Do you actually like want things to like? If anything, because it, it it feels like there are some people. If you point out any problem with society, it's like, hey, maybe we should fix this or we should improve that, and they just kind of like poo poo it immediately. They just want to like. It's like they. It, it's almost like. I don't know. It's just like this very like defeatist, just like almost like resigned attitude towards everything in their life. Or like a perfect example when we're talking about, um, hey, wouldn't it be good if like people got higher wages so they could feed their kids? And then someone's like, why are you complaining? I work an 80 hour week and I can barely feed my children. And everyone's like, 
yeah, that's not good. <laughs> that's we that should that that's really fucked up. We shouldn't we should want to change that, right? And it's like almost like, are you bragging about this? What the fuck? Well, here's the thing: on the internet, people love to make themselves feel smarter than other people, and so whenever you make an argument, people like to just poke if they if they can poke any hole in your argument regardless of like what they're actually arguing for or against they like to do it just because like like i I, i'm sure you probably get this on your videos like if you if you make a point in a video people will be like hey but what about this one tiny scene in this other part that you know doesn't go along with what you said and it's like brother can you see the forest for the trees you know can you see that like we're talking generalities here and stuff like that and of course you can find one little thing that that goes wrong with this but Again, people just like to argue for arguing's sake because it makes them feel smarter than other people, and um, it's really stupid. <laughs> it really that is. makes the most sense. I, I have gotten comments like that. Most of them are fine. I actually appreciate it when it's when people are like, um, and I I understand that. <laughs> I know I bitch about this, but like now I understand the importance of like tone and approach. Kind of going back to what we we're talking about about if someone says something like questionable that like might be taken the wrong way the best thing you can do is try to approach it like give them the benefit of the doubt like try to approach like you know civilly if they start getting like cunty they start getting like and it's like okay you're not i thought you were maybe i thought that you kind of like were arguing in good faith but clearly not um the comments i get that are like oh hey there's actually this like i actually made him i actually made a mistake in my better call Saul video at the very end i misinterpreted something and someone pointed out and I was like, oh, it's cool. Thank you. But then there are others who were like, ha, you fucking, like, in so many words, they're like, you fucking moron. You got this, this wrong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah like, everything, this in this video, everything in this video is wrong because of this one thing that you <laughs> made a tiny mistake on. And I'm like, bro, I, I'm glad you, thank you for pointing this out to me. But like, now I don't ever want to talk to you ever again. <laughs> I think that's how I'll end this podcast. You know, fuck all the people, no matter what side you're on. You're stupid. Fuck y'all. Your arguments suck. And I hate you. We're the only ones that exist. We're the we're the only smart people. <laughs> only only we have the right takes. Fuck everyone else. <laughs> anyway, uh, thank you guys for uh, listening to this as always, and stay tuned for the uh, next episode. Of no one's a critic. Coming soon. Take care, y'all. <laughs>